Welcome to another edition of the Defo Show with Luby, right here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. What a scintillating night in South Florida sports. The Florida Panthers do it once again. Now, I have to admit, getting down by four goals for two games out of three is not the dream. And Bobrovsky was pulled because he has sort of been off lately after actually having a really strong season. But Spencer Knight came in, did the job, and the offense once again... There's a reason it is the best offense in the NHL for the last 25 years. Offense scored four goals in the, is it three goals? I think it was three goals in the second period to make it a 5-4 game. And then two goals in the third period to take a 6-5 lead. They allowed a tie, a, they allowed the Maple Leafs to tie it up at 6-6. But in overtime, hoobie dooby doo does it again. The Panthers win 7-6. Huberto, two goals, three assists. Now over 100 points the first time in Panthers history. A player gets over 100 points to Panthers. Still sitting there, number one in the Eastern Conference after coming back again in dramatic fashion over the Maple Leafs, who are one of the best teams in all of hockey. Got down, showed fight at the Florida Live Arena, and got the victory. The Miami Heat were in a dogfight until... Halftime, then they got down in the third quarter, and then late third, entire fourth, blew the doors off the Charlotte Hornets, winning 144 to 115. Tyler Hero sets a career high, 35 points, came off the bench, uh, was amazing. Ties, I think, Dwayne Wade for highest off the bench scoring with 35 points in that affair. Jimmy Butler was strong, Bam Adebayo played well. No Kyle Lowry, and it didn't matter. The Miami Heat throttled the Hornets in the end, and... One more win, and they clinched the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. They have two games left, sitting there two and a half up on both the Celtics and the Bucks. But today, we talk a little Miami Dolphins. It is a Dateline Dolphins with John Congemi. The Miami Dolphins have had, if not the best offseason in the NFL top three, and the best offseason we've seen in a long time. And we know down here offseasons don't win, but it's not just big names. They've got big names that fit perfectly with what Mike McDaniel's trying to do and fit perfectly around their young quarterback that has been maligned. Like, Tua has gotten a lot of crap, even though he's actually around the league average as a quarterback with the worst roster around him. So that would mean if he had any talent, he'd be top 15. And elite talent, which he has now, would be top 10. The Miami Dolphins have been scintillating. Chris Greer, a guy that I've given a lot of guff, deservedly, I think he should have been fired. The moves have been made right. I don't know if it's all Mike McDaniel. We talked with John Jemmy, a CBS4 Dolphins insider, a Miami Dolphins insider, works with the Dolphins as well. Has also been a football analyst for ESPN over the years. Drunk and Jimmy joins us each and every week, and we talk a lot of Dolphins right here on the Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Any mention of Switzer he goes for it, and uh, you know Jimmy just dives right in. <laughs> Jimmy great. Johnson, there, uh, of course, uh, we had that interview with Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, and uh, that was orchestrated by the great John Kinchemi, and uh, you know his laying low partner in, in this venture. Yeah, where are we? One Mr. Thomas Fox. Q. Fox. <laughs> Where's Mr. Fox? We haven't heard from in a long, long time. Tommy, where are you, baby? We have to He's get down there and uh, do that show. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, with the stock market, the volatility and all of that, uh, he's probably all over the place. Uh, all right. I mean, f- for a rare time, uh, John, I mean, I'm really excited about uh, like what this guy might be able to do. And, and I always have the usual appropriate caution about any new incoming coach. We, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We thought Coco Cameron might be an innovator until he started talking about, you know, uh, fail uh, forward fast or whatever that was. And then and the he was family. sitting in the stands with a hot dog and a beer while his assistants <laughs> were coaching the last preseason game for a team that was going to go 1-15, in 15, yes, for yes. God's sake. Yep. So it isn't like they didn't need the practice game and uh, didn't need his presence there on the sideline. Uh, you know, that loomed as a rather large mistake and kind of a bozoic move uh, that was typical of the Dolphins organization for, uh, like, the last 20 years. But, uh, uh, you know, I- I'm looking at the Giants, uh, you know, they're, they're – uh, all optimistic that they're on the right path uh, with this Brian Dayball. And, uh, you know, obviously people here in Miami are thinking that, uh, well, McDaniel will be the answer. But we, we thought that of Adam Gase and we thought that of many others all came in with high praise and, and a lot of people saying how great they were going to be and what geniuses they were. And, and it didn't pan out. So, uh, you know, hoping to be, you know, uh, correct about this, that this guy might have something on the ball that, that has been missing here for a while from the uh, sidelines. And then, I mean, the personnel moves, uh, we've talked about it the uh, last few weeks. I mean, uh, with the acquisition of Tyreek Hill, 
Uh, my goodness. I mean, uh, you know, and then later they, they subsequently make another trade that, that was praised because uh, they dumped Devontae Parker. Yep, and got and, a third-round pick. You know, supposedly got a, at least what whatever value plus uh, Devontae Parker might have on the open market. And, and it, it struck me, when did they start making every move that everybody's going, oh, wow, that's a stroke of genius. Uh, you know, that, this is a, a radical turnaround from years gone by, no? It is. And, you know, if you keep doing the same thing and you have no success, well, you have to be able to adjust and do something different. And I think the Dolphins uh, radically have changed their belief in what they're doing in the offseason, especially when it comes to free agency. They address the offensive side of the football, because when you look around the NFL, you need to score 27, 30 points. It seems like a game to have a chance to win. That doesn't guarantee you winning, but it gives you a chance to win on most Sundays, Monday nights, and Thursday nights. So you're hoping that you can do that. And with the addition of Tyreek Hill, he's probably one of the most, uh, arguably one of the most electric players in terms of being able to make explosive plays and make the scoreboard kind of light up. Uh, You know, you get Amari Cooper, you know, you get a handful of guys that are out there in terms of that can do those types of things. Well, the Dolphins seem like they have a couple guys now in the slot that teams are going to be fearful of how do we approach this, especially if McDaniel is this run guru and can make uh, this offensive line into something that is going to be with, play with more consistency. If the zone blocking scheme fits the Dolphins' offense so they can run the football with more consistency, it's going to allow Tua and the weapons that they've been able to acquire in terms of all that speed not only at wide receiver, but at the running back spot. And don't forget, you've, you've got Mike Kosicki, who's that kind of rare tight end that you put in, in a mismatch situation as well. So, and they have a fullback. So let, let's, let's, they're, they're totally turned the tide of what they're going to do offensively. And I think it's going to help the defense because this team's going to play keep away a little bit more uh, than they have in the past. Not only be have the ability to score points, but stay on the field and be able to, you know, third and two, it doesn't necessarily have to be a pass. You know, it's, it's a little bit of emotion. It's a, it's a jet sweep to Tyreek Hill. It's a, it's a Raheem Mostert or uh, Chase Edmonds behind Alec Ingold, you know, a fullback and you get four and then you get another set of, uh, of, you know, downs and you keep this drive going instead of two, a ball batted down, you punt it away. It's a 30 yard punt. And now the Buffalo bills got it on the 40 yard line. You know, you're tired of seeing that that uh, scenario play out. Well, and John, and, and a lot of people, and I guess you as well, just did the, well, it has to be Chris Greer. I get it. He's the GM, and so we assume he's making personnel decisions. Uh, what I find curious is either Flores was really involved or, or Mike McDaniel is also involved because, to me, the way that Flores was there, he was very aggressive defensively very cautious offensively. And now you're saying, look, we're going to keep being aggressive defensively. And now we're going to be aggressive offensively. And that feels like what Mike McDaniel was trying to do with the Niners and wants to do here. Maybe he doesn't have final Sam personnel, but it it, it feels like to me, the mentality has done a 180. And that is the mentality of this coach compared to the last coach. So it's hard for me to believe that Mike McDaniel's imprint is not on these moves somewhere because again, it's very much like what he wants to do offensively, whereas what Brian Flores wanted to do offensively was the total antithesis. Well, let's not forget the dominoes had a fall in other places yeah. for this to even you know be a reality, right? Yeah. So if the Raiders don't go out and, and make the big splash at wide receiver that you never thought was going to happen in Green Bay, I don't think a guy like Tyreek Hill and, and the argument of, why not? Why don't the Chiefs just figure out a way to pay him and keep this guy, right? In, in massage somewhere else on your roster because you still have Patrick Mahomes for another ten years. You're still going to get the best out of, uh, you know, Kelsey and and Hill and and the you know the the auxiliary cast at wide receiver that they have out there and Hardeman and whoever else that you know they have it at wide receiver. It's not going to matter because they're still going to be you know the most explosive offense in the AFC. But with all those dominoes falling into, into place and then all the quarterbacks leaving the NFC and coming to the NFC, uh, the AFC, yes. the Dolphins, are, you know, if they stand pat, they're, they're looking up at a lot of teams. 
and they had to do something. So all of a sudden they get a break. They get an opportunity to, to color outside the lines and say, well, wait a minute, let's go for it in the next two or three years because you're going to have to pay, you know, at, at some point these contracts <laughs> come that yeah. you have to pay a lot of money. Yeah. So you have your windows of opportunity. And I think the dolphins have that now because they did a really good job in free agency this year. They acquire a bunch of talent. They acquire two draft round, uh, first round draft choices next year and get more additional cap space by getting rid of Devonte Parker. Yep. So they're not only have spent a lot of money, but they have a lot of money in the bank to go forward in the next couple of years. So this, this window is probably, you know, 2023, four, five, and then you just got to start paying the bills. Uh, you know, if it, if it doesn't work out, but by then, by in another year, we're going to know what you, what you have a quarterback. Do you have to go back into the draft or do you have to go into free agency or, or is two of the guy or, or is two of you know, with, with the talent around him, can he be the quarterback that has a chance to win a Super Bowl with this cast that's assembled right now? I'm thinking yes, yes. And, and I guess the, uh, I the flabbergasting <laughs> thing is uh, holy Mike Tannenbaum. How, how is this happening uh, while we're here? I, I, I believe this, uh, that if John Kajemi was uh, quarterback in this team and, and you looked out to the left there and there's Tyreek Hill and, and you looked over to the right and there's Jalen Waddle. And you have a big receiver going over the middle, and you also have the option of throwing a Jacecki, who's been catching a ball in traffic now for the last couple of seasons, and, and really had a monster year last year as a pass catching tight end. Uh, you've got a better offensive line. I mean, it has to be at least forty percent better just by the acquisitions that you made. If these guys hold up, and uh, you know are able to play the full season, so you, you've taken two of the five positions that were suspect. And improved. And I think if you're throwing a rock, I mean, what a luxury for a quarterback, huh? Well, at you, that point, you got you to gotta be excited about your opportunity, right? I mean, even Teddy Bridgewater, who, you know, came out and said, you know, everybody's got a role and he's going to be the backup. But if he has to play, how excited is he going to be? You know, if something were to happen to Tua for a couple of weeks, at least you've got a guy that knows that he doesn't have to do, you know, yeoman's work. He just get in and run the offense because yeah. it's going to run itself. So I, I think Tua Tungabailoa uh, has to be excited about his opportunity because he couldn't have wished for a better scenario yep. in terms of he must feel like he's at Alabama again yeah. because yeah. you've got you've got you know two or three heads at running back that you can put in with a fullback that you can play smash mouth a little bit. You've got two of the most dynamic guys in space when they get their hands on the football that can make the first guy miss and all of a sudden a five yarder turns into. 40 yards touchdown and you still have Preston Williams hopefully on the outside that's going to be able to give you that big play big dude big rangy you know catch radius type of guy you get it close and he can make a catch or at least get PI down the field for an easy 40 yards because of how you know lanky he is and he can go up and play in the air so if the it, the, the whole key is what you talked about Defo they've improved 40 percent of the offensive line in terms of the left side now they have to figure out what happens on the right side? Who plays best at guard and tackle? Yeah. Because you lose you lose your swing guy that can play both sides in Jesse Davis, but is it Austin Jackson now? You know he's a first round draft choice. Is he better at ta at, at starting, or is he is he the sixth guy for another year or two? Because you have the luxury of a of a contract that's not going to cost you a whole bunch. So you know, Eichenberg in his second year is he going to be better? Just putting him in at the right tackle spot and say let him play. Or is, or is Austin Jackson that guy? You, you never know who's going to end up winning, but you're probably going to need both of them because Armstead you know, hasn't played a full season in a long time, so you're yep. going to need guys that can play right side and left side. So I, I think that's going to still be the focus of this team and the catalyst to where it goes, getting the right pieces in place up front. And I believe McDaniel was uh, able, uh, didn't Mostert average almost five yards of carry yes, over or, five or yards. over yep. five yards of yeah, carry over, for yep. a season? Uh, uh, somewhere close to that uh, when he was with San Francisco. Now, now he has to bounce back from a tour in ACL, and, and you know, there's no guarantee that, you know, he, he's going to be 100% as effective as he was in the past, and he's been around for for a little while also. But uh, what, what I like, I mean, you need a bailout guy. Everybody does in the NFL. Tyreek Hill is a bailout guy and, and was for Mahomes. And, and Waddle uh, was kind of a bailout guy towards the end of the season uh, for Tua, as was Jacecki. So you have any number of places you can go. I mean, you're lucky if you have one of those type of guys, yep. uh, you know, where, where Brady's thrown to a Gronk or an Edelman or, or uh, you know, uh, a uh, you know, Welker. 
uh, you know, uh, during his time. And, you know, Peyton Manning had his bailout guys. But, but you know, you have you have any number of options of guys that, that always seem to come through in a clutch, which, uh, you know, that, 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 that would be a real luxury, I, I would think. So uh, I, I'm optimistic. I don't know if I'm buying season tickets yet, but, um, you know, I'm definitely optimistic. And, and I'm just wildly surprised, John Kajemi, at uh, what seems to be a series of intelligent moves, uh, you know, and aggressive moves <laughs> made by the Dolphins. As Luby pointed out, I mean, it was true that, that Flores, when he was coaching, uh, it seemed like they concentrated uh, in free agency, especially on defense. Yep. And uh, now, you know, they have a defense that's respected and and should be, yeah, the and league. they're going to stay aggressive there. They kept the you know the same coach, and and it looks like they have an offense that maybe. You know, we'll put pressure on the other team instead of, you know, just constantly sort of doing what's conventional. And then every now and then they do something crazy, like run a wildcat play. You know, yeah, like, it's, what it's is that? One thing, it's one thing to talk about offense and scoring points, but we haven't even touched on the other side. I think it was really smart of the Miami Dolphins to keep Josh Boyer, the defensive coordinator, to keep the nucleus of this defensive front seven. And in the back end, you get two young safeties. You've yeah. got two veteran corners. You've got depth at the linebacker spot. You've got guys that can get after the the uh, opposing quarterback with yep. the re-signing of Emmanuel Ogba. You've still got Van Ginkle on the outside. You've got Jerome Baker that likes to blitz from the linebacker spot. And you've got some horses up front in terms of big guys that can stop the run. So when you look at this team on paper, yes, they're vastly improved. This is the best roster the Miami Dolphins have had in years and you're crossing I think since fingers. 72. I, I, <laughs> I would say mid No, really, it could yeah. be. Yeah. You know, you're crossing your fingers that, you know, you've got the right guy quarterback, and time will tell. But, you know, they think that by, by helping him uh, with the weapons that they've acquired, it's going to make him more consistent. That's the only thing that I think Tua needs to be. He's played well in spurts. He's been very accurate. He's able to escape pressure. But it's, that, it's the turnover when things break down uh, it, during that stretch of seven losses in a row, I think it was, where you're kind of questioning, you know, is, is he the right guy? Because you don't see that happen in other places. Well, getting better talent around him might might cure that because and, and getting a, a different system offensively yep. that's more suited to what he he did in Alabama. Yep. Uh, I think uh, you hit it right on the head. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, compatible, I mean, to, to what his uh, strengths are. Uh, the, the people that yep. they brought on uh, in terms of offensive personnel. I mean, uh, they could have got any number of, of flyers uh, that can run on the outside, and, and uh, maybe that's not as valuable to Tua uh, as a Tyreek Hill who has that capability uh, along with Waddle. But at the same time, uh, they have the uh, you know a real talent to work inside, and, and that's where they do most of their damage and did, even with a guy who could fire to rock like Mahomes. Yes. Right. No, you're right. You're exactly right. I, I think the AFC is going to be oh, a Jesus. bloodbath because <laughs> you're, you're looking at teams. And you're saying, well, who, who are the eight teams that are going to be, you know, in the playoffs? And you keep going, you switch them around. You There's know? like 12. <laughs> because you don't know how Deshaun's going to be in Cleveland. You don't know, uh, you know, how the Denver Broncos are going to be vastly improved with Russell Wilson, a quarterback. You know, the Chargers are going to be good. The Raiders have improved. KC and the Bills are KC and the Bills. Yep. So you're, you're running out of spots. Yeah, and uh, you know the Dolphins at least uh, have given their fans and the gullible media here. I, you know, I, but I, 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 I'm not one not. to buy into uh, a I'm lot of their insanity. Not. You know, I mean, you, you look at some of their moves; they're always very curious, and you're thinking, uh, really? I mean, why on earth would you do that? And, and yet, that that hasn't been the case at all. It's been the exact opposite so far during this uh, off season, which is great. And uh, while they don't have that uh, kind of steam going in the draft this year, uh, they, they they seem to have a roster that. Uh, you, you would have to think would be uh, at least contenders, uh, even in a very competitive AFC. John, always a pleasure, man. Uh, Thank you again, John Jimmy, for joining us on these Dayline Dolphins, brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill of Key Largo. John gives Chris Greer a lot of credit. I'm still a little wavering because, like I said there, it's a little interesting that everything changed. The minute Mike McDaniel took over and Brian Flores left. Now, look, Brian Flores had a lot to do with the personnel. Brian Flores is a Patriot guy. We focus on smart moves and aggressive moves defensively, and we just let things fall where they may on offense. It wasn't working offensively, and this is an offensive league. So what they did, look, let's not go backwards defensively because they have one of the top five or so defenses in the league. Kept mostly every player, re-signed Agba, and kept defense coordinator Josh Boyer, but let's go be aggressive on offense, and they went with speed. 
Running backs, Edmonds, Mostert, Tyreek Hill. You already have Waddle. Cedric Wilson Jr., one of the unsung receivers in the league that a lot of people like around the league. And then let's shore up that offensive line. You get the best offensive lineman in free agency. You get one of the best guards available in free agency. And Hunt had a good year. And they actually like Dieter. So you just got to figure out that right side between Eichenberg and Jackson. But you have draft picks. You still have money now because you made a smart trade for Parker. I don't give Greer all the credit. But I'm sure being the personal guy, he had a lot to do with it. Mike McDaniel has come in and been aggressive with everything he said. He's smart with what he said. And they've been aggressive with their moves and smart with their moves. John Jimmy loves it and gives Greer credit. Likes the new Greer. And likes the smart Dolphins. So do we. We appreciate you checking us out tomorrow. Check us out in the mornings on the Ion channel. Just Google the Defo Show, D-E-F-O, and also exclusive content on the Believe Network. Today, we'll talk with a South Florida guy. Craig Minervini knows baseball locally, nationally, works with Bally Sports Florida with the Marlins, knows hockey with those Panthers, Bally Sports Florida with the Panthers. Knows So today, if you want to get a little bit of South Florida flair on the Believe Network, Search After Hours, Defo and Luby. If you want more of us, every day right here, the Defo Show with Luby on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation location because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. Their hours have changed a little bit. Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 10. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11.30 to 10. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Hey, folks. Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously, friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? 